Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in the last video, we worked with Arduino and sensors, and uh, we worked with um, the temperature sensor. And as we said before, uh, we will be working with three different sensors, a temperature sensor, light intensity sensor, as well as the ultrasonic sensor. And as we discussed in the last video as well, uh, we, we said that the, usually the, the procedure for working with sensors involves two main steps, setup as well as the main operation. In the setup, we do the pin setup, initial sensor values, initialization, as well as uh, optionally, we start the serial monitor which is used to display the values. And in the main program, we do the following steps. We first capture the raw sensor value, and then we the next will be calibrating. Now, this is usually um, optional or already performed in the sensor library. However, if it's not there, or if you need further calibration, then you need to do it yourself. And we did some calibration using uh, resistors as well as using software. And we also worked with the value, which is, uh, but what we did with the last video was simply to display the value or the output. Now in this video, we will do the next step, which is to, to use the value of the sensor to automate something else. And in this case, we will use the value from the sensor to control an LED light. So in the last video, we worked with a temperature sensor. This time I'm gonna work with a light intensity sensor. And in the next video, we will work with ultrasonic. So let's move on to, to uh, Tinkercad and um, let's start with the components. So here's my photoresistor. Now in, um, in the PowerPoint slide or in a module in our class, um, we already have that. But in the module, this is the photoresistor right here, only this part. But this whole thing is the, the component used to convert the analog value of the photoresistor into a digital value. That's why you see that it's actually linked. Oh, I'm taking that back. So this is obviously still an analog sensor because it's obviously linked to an analog uh, input. So we're gonna continue with very, very similar work here. So this is obviously output. This is the ground and this is the power. As we discussed in the last video, every sensor would need a power, some sort of electricity to work, and then it needs to be grounded in order to avoid damaging the equipment, and of course, we need also the output. So let's proceed with our, now in this case, in this diagram here, there's no resistors, so there's no uh, controls, but we may as well, we might as well use resistors nevertheless. Um, again, the resistors, could be or could not be used um, only for the purpose of calibration. I'm guessing that this is what the purpose of here or this board, that in here, um, they did in fact add resistors or other components in order to calibrate the value before it comes out. But in Tinkercard, we only have the photoresistor. So we will have to do the calibration ourselves again. So breadboard, we put it here, we put a resistor. And uh, like I said earlier, in this video, we're gonna use the values from this sensor to control an LED. But we will come to the LED later. But for now, let's just build our circuit. Let's do our first step, which is capturing the values from the sensor and then display it. Let's just do that first. Okay, so this one has two outputs, so power and value. There's, there's no three outputs. Usually we have output, uh, power, output, and ground. Well, we will have that still, but in a slightly simple, simpler manner. So let's connect. So terminal two will be the output. So that's connected to the positive, which is in this case will be linked to the power source. In this case, it will be uh, five volt, not three volt, is it? Five or three. Let's check out the diagram here. Yes, it's a five volt. So. Yeah, so let's just continue with the five volt. So as usual, the power, I usually go for a red color and this will be also red color. So, okay, we're good. Now from here, we're gonna have to send the, the value, which is the output plus the ground together. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna simply come here and send this to analog zero or A zero. So in this case, that will be the output, and usually the output I use blue. 
and for the ground basically we will try and let's just fix it a little bit here and here yeah and uh, yeah let's move this a little bit yeah so if we do this if we provide power and straight away all of that power goes back to the board this is going to result in some form of damage because this 5 volt is going to go out from here go to the sensor and then all of this power is going to go back here and that is going to result in a damage so instead we're going to have to ground some of this output so we're going to use the same trick we used on uh, calibration by putting a resistor here so as you can see now uh, as the power goes in through the sensor and then comes out it's not all of it going to go out but instead some of it is going to go to the ground which is right here so we take this now which is green uh, we send it to the ground and which is right here okay and how much we put uh, let's just say uh, right now is one ohm let's just go with this one for now i'm not sure what's the value we can play with the value if this is too high we can always reduce it it depends we can use this as a calibration as well okay so what's next so what's next is the programming so let's take a look at the program let's just first of all hide this and now the programming is extremely similar to what we did last time so in this case i'm going to actually uh, bring that code that we wrote last time and then uh, uh, essentially uh, reuse it rather than trying to rewrite everything from scratch uh, we're going to use similar, um, how do I say this, similar uh, layout of the program. So I actually, what I did was I uh, sort of prepared some of the, uh, you know what, let's write it again from scratch. So let's just start from here and uh, let's just throw away this. Yeah, this will be a good opportunity to us to recap or re, re um, how do I say it? revise the steps that we need to work with uh, use in order for the sensor so first things first we need to do um, pin setup is that right setup as well as uh, initial yeah initial values is that right uh, so right here this is the output is going to go to a0 so we're going to call this now constant integer and then sensor pin and we're gonna set the value as a0 and don't forget the semicolon next we're gonna yeah that's it for now so initial values will be uh, integer sensor value and that will be um, zero for now it's a wait it's not an integer so let's make it a double because it obviously a sensor value can never be an integer okay sensor value is this okay setup and now we have to go and set up the pin mode so we have pin mode uh, and sensor value and obviously the sensor is an input so input okay and the next will be what again yeah serial so serial dot begin and nine six zero zero and this what else can we zoom in here yes we can so now that we have set up properly what's next to do is to capture the value since this is an analog sensor right so essentially we're going to use i'm going to copy paste this one now from my last program use exactly the same as we did before capture sensor value and that will be analog sensor pen and a little bit of housekeeping here let's not do this here so yes yeah just for organization sake and then what's next is to after we capture the sensor value um, there is a possibility for calibration so i'm gonna calib calibrate value and then display value Uh, I have already written uh, basically we're gonna do now uh, this play value 
And here we go. Okay, so this is already been written. So what I did was essentially serial mon serial print uh, the light sensor value reading, and then we have the sensor value which is right here, and then just a little bit of cleanup, and then that's it. And then after that, we're going to use uh, it's a habit. After I write code, I have to save. And then here we can put use sen sensor value, which is the purpose of this tutorial. But for now, let's just check this one out and see if it runs. Oh, we are getting values. So let's close this. Now, just like the temperature sensor, we can also work with this sensor here by clicking here. You can see that this is the environment now. The illumination is, what's the value? Uh, this is the most bright value is equal to around 600 and 679. And this is the minimum value, which is six. What does that mean? Uh, is it probably calibrated? I don't know because I don't know what the real um, 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 illumination is, but I guess for now that will work. If you're not happy with the numbers, you can come and calibrate right here, the same way we did last time. You can alter the value of the sensor. If I do this, for example, if I change this to mega, you can see the values have changed considerably because the bigger the resistance here, that means most of the current goes here, so that's why the values increase. I'm gonna say that one more time. If I increase the value for the resistor, it makes it bigger, right? So this will become almost like a wall. Nothing is going to go through the resistor. So the majority of the current is going to go back to the output, resulting in increased values. But if you reduce the resistors here, so some of this current will go out to the ground, and the balance will be left here, resulting in reduced values here. So I'll say that again. So you see, if this is 1,000, so most of the 1,000 is going to go through here to the output, to the value. But if I reduce the resistance here, some of this 1,000 is going to go here, so maybe 500 of it. And then the balance, or the 500, will go through here. So let's just try that. If I go back to kilo, so see 400 of the 1,000 just now goes through the resistance now, and the rest goes through here. If you reduce further, so let's say ohm, as if, as if nothing is here, as if it's just a wire. So most of the current goes out here, and nothing goes through here. So Let's not get there. So one kilo ohm is the standard, so I'm just going to go with that, and this will be our values. And this is it. So this essentially is part one. It's basically very, very similar to what we did in the first video. We captured the values. We we uh, we did some setup. We captured the values, uh, and then we displayed the output and nothing else with it. So what we want to do now is that we want to use the value of the resistor to switch on and off an LED. Uh, we want to have an LED right here, and this LED, or the light, essentially will be controlled not by a button, but rather by the sensor value. The idea is, in the beginning when we worked with LEDs, they were controlled using buttons. So essentially, um, what, I, what was if you have uh, a button, you can then press the button to switch on and off the light. What we are doing is something else. It basically depends on the illumination. What does that mean? Meaning, if it's already dark outside, aka the illumination is very low, the lights will switch on automatically. And when if it's bright, the light will switch off automatically. So any meaning is imagine it's the light in your room and you don't have to press the button to switch on the lights or switch off the lights. It will basically follow the illumination. If it's daytime, it will be switched off. If it's nighttime, it will be switched on. And that's exactly what we're going to achieve right here. So to do this, we obviously need an LED. So let's get one LED right here. Uh, you can change the color of the light. Uh, red is cool, but uh, red is nice. So. Again, we need to connect it. Now, LED is usually digital, so there's no need for it to go to uh, an analog. So I'm just going to get an output from here, and uh, let's just send it to 9. Why 9? Could be any number you want, as long as it's a digital output. And on the other side, we also need to ground it. You see, this is very, very similar to what's going on here. Uh, if you don't ground the light, then uh, basically, uh, the majority of the light or the light value is going to go through here. 
By controlling the value of the resistor, you can actually control the illumination of the LED. If you have a high resistor, yeah, actually, well, let's just test that. Um, I'll come back to this issue in a minute. So right now, what we did was, well, we I connected the LED output to uh, pin number nine, digital, and I also grounded it on the other side. So right now, the LED is grounded. And then we're going to control the LED using the values of the resistor. So let's take a look at the program again. Now, since we introduced a new element, which is an LED, we'll have to come back here and update the program. Let's just go back for now. So again, now that we have an LED, we now have to update the code. So every time you introduce a new hardware, you'll have to do this again. So now we have LED pen. LED, no, I like this, LED pin, and this time is not A0, but it is 9, 9, and now we're going to copy this guy, and we'll come back to it later, and LED is not an input, it's essentially, it's an output, so we're going to copy this whole thing and put it here, and it is not uh, an input, it's an output. How do you know whether... Oh wait, I think I made a mistake here. Yeah, I think um, this should not be value, should this be since, since the pin. Yet it worked. That was something. Uh, and this should be LED pin. Yeah, I have to... Let's get back here for a second. I want to run this again. And run this again. Um, just hide those last two items. And run the simulation. I guess it's a coincidence because the sensor value was zero, so that was considered the same value as here. Lucky us, I guess. But anyway, let's move on. So now let's get back to this and reactivate this one. So we have a new pin, which is LED, and it's an output LED pin. That's actually an output. And then sensor value, we capture the value, and then this is nothing changes here. We capture the sensor value, we calibrate it, and then we display it. And then now, this is something new. See, what we're we going to do right now is, is we're going to have to build the logic of this thing first. So if dark, then what? LED on. Is that right? This is what we want, right? And else, or if bright, then what now? Then LED off. All right, this is the simple logic. So all we need to do is a simple F statement in C. So W3 schools and C++. Uh, I really forgot the F statement, so <laughs> I have to come back and get it here. So conditions, F statement. Yeah, so here's my F statement. And, and while we are at it, is there any else F? No, okay. So here we go. So we put it here. So, okay, so what do we want to do right now? How do you know whether it's dark? Well, it depends on the sensor value. The sensor value indicates dark. So how are you going to indicate dark here based on this value? Uh, let's run this again. I hope we don't get an error because some of my work is not yet. Um, some of my work is not, yeah, this is not complete, so let's just hide this for a minute because the F statement block is empty. So run this again. Okay, so I see this value right here. Uh, let's just see here. Okay, this is dark, and dark represents or equal to 6. So the 6LX is equal to dark. Now, if I go all the way up here, 679 represents bright. So what is the cutoff point? What do we actually between them. So I'm going to roll this thing to the bottom or to the middle and uh, as much as I can. And as you can see, the number is 53, 535. So in other words, we're going to be here that if the sensor value is less than 535, it's going to be considered dark. And if it's more than 535, it's going to be considered bright. We just going to have to agree on that. So we're just going to come here and say dark. Dark means what? Uh, 
value less less than five three five and this will be if it's bright then it's gonna be bigger than bigger than five three five and then, then basically it and that's it so now we're gonna have to translate this into actual if statement so if what is it yeah sensor value right here if sensor value is here if sensor value is uh, what was that less than okay let's say less than or equal okay less than or equal five three five then what then we're gonna have to tell the led to switch on is that right so i'm gonna do that is since it's a digital pin right here so we're gonna use digital right so digital right and led pin high and that is it we're gonna basically tell it to switch on and okay what's the other way around we can simply put else and um, right here and if if that's the case then we just come and do this now else would work but again uh, if you know me from previous videos i would like to be explicit on my if statements so i'm gonna come here and say if it's greater and that's it although this is redundant right now but i'd like to be explicit just in case and oh wait this is has to be if it's already bright then it has to be low okay so this should work so let's run it error ah oh, sensor i think i left one of those semicolons somewhere Or maybe there's an extra am I getting something oh yeah it should be else f not else yeah yeah so now we can see it's already dark and then the LED is on I didn't touch it I didn't do anything so let's change the brightness let's make it daytime it's already off so here we are, we controlled the, the LED through the sensor. Now, of course, we are doing it ourselves, but this is only because we are in Tinkercad, we are simulating the world. But in the real world, if this was already bright, say daytime, or you know, you, 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 tore, you put a light on the sensor, the LED will be switched off. But then if you move it to the dark direction, then it will be light on. Now, let's come back to this comment earlier. And if I want the brightness of the LED to change differently, well, let's see what happens if I make a bigger LED uh, resistant here. So no, this is dark, and yet, believe it or not, this is already on, but it's very, very dim because of the resistor. If I actually come here, you might notice, I see, this is very, very dark. Let's just see that closer. So this is dark. If I come to the nighttime, it's on, but because of the very high resistor, it's very, very dim. To increase the brightness, change it to a very small resistance you can see now what happened so one kilo ohm will be okay now in the real world if you actually do this if you put a small resistor this might burn this will be destroyed so let's just stick to the resistor which is one kilo ohm which is right here if you want to make it uh, let's say smaller than that say 500 right you can see the brightness is slightly in or 500 ohms right so this will be also work and that's it. This is essentially the second video. We created a program that reads the value from the sensor uh, and then uses the value from the sensor to control the another component. Now we could have done anything else here. We could have basically put the value to control a motor or an actuator or anything else we, we wanted. All right, so in the next and the last video for this week, we will work with the, the ultrasonic sensor to measure distance. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.